by May 27th. Today, I'm gonna talk about learning. So I have a sorbet that I made with my Ninja Creamy and <clears throat> hot water. So I'm gonna tell a little story of how I learned to do things in the kitchen. And there's, you've probably heard multiple times people say, it takes 10,000 hours of doing something to get good at it. And I don't believe that to be true unless you're not really paying attention when you do it. Because there's, uh, there's like active focus learning and then there's just being a robot and just going through the motions. If you do it the, the slow way, which is <clears throat> just going through the motions and not really putting mental thought into it on how you can actually improve, then yeah, it might take 10,000 hours. But I couldn't rocher before this morning. And so far I probably spent about maybe 15 minutes doing this and I think I'm ready decently good at it. So for this video, I'm just gonna get another 10 minutes of practice. But basically, first thing is to smooth it all out so you can get a nice clean scoop and kind of stir everything around to get it not fluid, but malleable and pliable, I guess. And then hot water. <clears throat> and then I'll start practicing. So scoop in, twist, and pull back. So there's my first one for, let me take this bottom part off. Looks okay. Still needs more practice. That's what I'm doing. Anyways. You can, you, obviously doing something for 10,000 hours if you don't, if you're not good at it after that point, you should probably be doing something else because that's a waste of, <laughs> waste of your time. But like active learning to me is you're, you're always thinking like, okay, you do it and then you see, hmm, how could I have improved on that? And then you actively change it. You try to move your hands a little tighter you try to roll a little tighter, you try to cut straighter. It's about putting effort into things that makes you better at something or not better because you didn't put any effort. You're just on autopilot. So when I was on the competition team at KCC for culinary school, we had to learn how to do tournays. And it it's really hard if you don't know how to do it because you like you just it's just like witchcraft how 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 do you even end up with that like seven sided thing that's equally cut on all sides it's, it's kind of like a either you do it or you don't do it anyways my first team everyone sucked at it really bad me included and i don't like sucking at things so i uh i asked my teacher if he could just order a case of apples for us. Not us, for me specifically, 50 pounds of apples. And then it's culinary school. And since you're on the team, the teacher is always willing to let you practice if you wanna put the effort into it to get better. So I came in by myself, two hours, not one hour, hour and a half to two hours earlier than you're supposed to come in. The class starts at seven o'clock. I came in early and I just pulled out that whole case of apples. And then I just started tourneying all of them just to practice. And it wasn't like I just banged through the whole case, like uh, I just did it for speed. But every time I did it, I put thought into it and thought into, oh, that was a bad cut or, oh, this was, I cut too far. I didn't cut far enough. and. Every apple turned out to be four quenelles. So I cut at least maybe around a hundred apples. So four, 400 tournays and it took me an hour and a half to do it. So that wasn't 10,000 hours, obviously, but 
after that hour and a half, I was pretty proficient at doing it. Because normally, uh, you're supposed to cut your potato or apple or whatever, then you use a bird's beak. You cut the end off on the top, and then you cut, twist, cut, twist, cut, twist, cut, twist, till you get seven even edges on the, it's like a hexagon with seven sides. And then you trim the bottom half, and it has to be this, like this, and like this big. So it's a very precise dimension. As you can tell, since it has seven sides that are meant to be equal, every time you mess up one side, all the other sides are uneven. So it's kind of a do it perfect or else you have to fix it, which takes twice as long. But that's how everyone was taught to do it. Like even the other teams and whatever, everyone was taught do it one time, go back around and clean it. But I thought like, hmm, why, why waste the time and do that? Just do it one time and have it come out perfectly. And that's what, that was the purpose of my uh, practice. Cause if you did top sides, bottom, and then you had to do eight of them, and then you went back around one more time, you essentially took the time to do 16 of them when you could have did eight of them perfectly the first time. And <clears throat> six minutes. Yeah, so that was my logic is even though we're practicing to do it in two two rounds of cuts, so what is it, nine, nine cuts, I made it a point to myself to learn how to do it in seven, six, eight, seven, whatever it is to go around one time. And yeah, from that day on, I could, I could just do it perfectly on the first one and I think that's what really taught me that as long as you put effort into it when you're practicing that's the that's the important thing one practicing is one thing but practicing with intention that's when you actually learn without having to do things for ten thousand hours and it i guess when it pertains to a kitchen it helps if you this one's nice and smooth but there's a hole on the side It helps if you have a uh, good, I call it good hands in the kitchen. You're like, you, you've you done enough with your hands that you can, you know how to move it, you know how to, cause I've, I've seen people do this before. I just never did it myself. And I know the motion and I've experienced hands in general. So like, I know, I know the motion that needs to be done. Oh, that's a nice one. I know them except the front. Yeah. So it's one thing to know that you made a mistake. And then it's another thing to know, know how to attempt to know how to correct it. So since that tip was uh, all messed up, I think I got to press in more. Yeah, no. Anyways. Intentional practice is how you get better than at things. And that's how, if you have less hours of practice than somebody else, some people are just naturally better than other people at doing certain things. Experience does not equal quality. It's a, it's a one indicator, because obviously on average, anyone who has had more time doing something should be better than somebody else doing it. but. It's very possible for somebody who's been doing something for two years to be better than somebody who's been doing something for three years. And it's just all, it's every part of somebody's uh, personality. Like, are they willing to learn from other people? Are they willing to see that they made a mistake? Are they willing to try to improve and put the effort into doing it? Oh, that's a nice one tip is little bit there's a little thing on there but that's a nice round one i i figured out that uh doing this this the shape of your spoon is really important i need a deeper bowl this one's kind of round round and shallow but it'll do for the practice 
but it's like it's like me working out oh it's 10 minutes all right that was a fast 10 minutes see you tomorrow